but I didn't ever, you know, I administered, I was kind of in, sometimes I was overseeing the auditing delivery in, in Scientology churches and stuff, but you were actually the one of the people who directed step by step what to do with people. That's correct, yes. Okay, so could you speak to Hubbard's policies about medicine and medical treatment for people who, you know, come into Scientology? Like, what does he say yeah. about it? What's the whole attitude about it? Um, as a general rule, um, really, the idea is that doctors basically are there to fix broken bones. Really, that is the major job of a doctor and nothing beyond that. Um, if you look at physically ill PCs and pre-OTs, um, he does say that there are some medical conditions that do uh, need medical treatment, but for the most part, most illnesses are considered mental. So okay, um, and that's a, that's the name of a of a of an issue Hubbard wrote, right? Physically yeah, ill. Yeah, it's uh, 12 March 1969. Physically ill PCs and pre-OTs. It says one can very easily go to extremes on mental illness versus physical illness. One school says all trouble comes from physical illness. Another says it all comes from mental illness. So this issue, which it goes on for several pages, is explaining how, uh, as, a, as the case supervisor, which is the job that I had, which was basically overseeing counseling, I have to decide if this person needs counseling sessions or if they need medical help. And when you, when you say medical help, it's not like send them to a doctor and trust them to a doctor. Um, in my early years before I was doing the counseling and the case supervisor functions, I was a medical officer. And what that meant is I was in charge of the medical for the staff. And at that time it was for a celebrity center. So if you had a person who had a medical condition, like, hey, their fever is 107, which has happened to me, um, that person is rushed to the hospital, but I have to be right behind them because that person goes into the hospital and immediately tells the doctors and nurses that I have the say so on what treatment or what medicine they can get. And I have to have all this stuff in my head. So when I was the medical officer, I had two um, things that I had to study up on. One was the phys physician's desk reference. And the second one was this thing that I had sent you a copy of. You said there's later versions of it, but it's from this underground, um, I, I think it's called the Underground Railroad and it's a book about psychiatry. It's that little red pamphlet picture that I sent you one time. Those yeah. are the two things that we would use to determine uh, if a drug was okay or not. Right. And because, you know, a lot of drugs have come out in the market that Hubbard never mentions in his bulletins, you know, they're, they're later. Right. So, we have to decide which ones are okay and which ones aren't. So um, for the most part, let's say somebody has a fever of 107, they have to go in there and they say, well, he's got an infection. Well, what are you gonna give him for that infection? Well, he's saying that he's nauseated, so we need to give him a medicine to stop the nausea. No, you cannot give him that medicine. You cannot you give would, him anti-nausea medicine. Now. Absolutely. And, and on the what reason- basis, Yeah, why would, you, why would you say that? Because the medicine, and I can't remember the name of it, maybe I'll have to find it, but the medicine that they use for nausea is also used in the field of psychiatry or psychology, psychiatry for something. So, so, so because it had <laughs> one minor psychotropic application or somehow was used by a psychiatrist in some context. It's completely out of the question. No, so, you can't have that. No, so you can give them saline. Uh, if they're dehydrated, and you can give them um, antibiotics if they have a bacterial infection. You know, oh, if it's a viral infection, maybe some vitamin shots. That's about wow. it. Wow. Wow. So, uh, what about like aspirin, Tylenol, you know, stuff like that? Yeah, let's get into that. The reason um, they are not—they are absolutely not allowed uh, under any circumstances. Um, and the reason for that is because Hubbard believes that uh, painkillers block your memories. Mm. If, you, if you have a pain in your hand and you block it with a drug, you're not going to get the proper counseling sessions to address that pain in the hand because you didn't feel it. 
So all pain medications are out of there. They're, they're completely wow. not acceptable. I snuck around a few times when I had a toothache and I took an Advil and I got so high off of one Advil. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was man. Like, wow, this is what, what no pain feels like. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'll tell you, I remember very clearly the very first time I took an aspirin. And it was a bold move. And I remember thinking, okay, well, fuck it. I'm just going to do it, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, this was after I had uh, met or known a Scientologist. So I was still a Scientologist, but I was not. This is after I left the Sea Org. The whole time I was, it was that in that, you know, year period where before I, you know, got declared. So I um, uh, never, the whole time I was in the Sea Org, did not take aspirins, Tylenols, at least not that I remember. I don't remember ever taking that. You just tough it out. Oh, yeah. you got a headache, you got some aches, you got some pains, you got whatever, growing old pains. I mean, you know, whatever it is, yeah, tough it out, dude. Yeah. You know, to the point where I would be thinking that if I was taking an aspirin or something like that, some kind of painkiller, if I was thinking about doing that, it was you know, no, because that's just a Band-Aid. I'm just covering up what's really going on. Yes. I have to address the root cause of where this pain is coming from, and that's probably psychosomatic because Hubbard yes. said 75% of all illnesses or conditions are psychosomatic in nature. That comes right out of Dianetics, Modern Science, and Mental Health. Yes. So that was my, personally, my own thinking as a Sea Org member and Scientologist based on the policies you were just reading from and talking about. Exactly. And then uh, the other thing is like, let's say for example, uh, you have a child, I mean, this one comes up a lot, is birth and you know, no pain medicine for that. Um, if, they, if they give in and take the pain medicine, even an Advil, they have to redo their drug handlings. You're gonna wow. be sent back to do the purification rundown all the way back up. That's right, that's right.